Hello and welcome to the Neat Glass Sponsored Whiskey Tangent Podcast, Whiskey Madness 2022, The Road to the Final Pour, a four-week-long blind tasting tournament featuring 16 whiskeys from around the world. I'm Scott and joining me as always is Ed. Hey everybody. And once again, breaking ties and taking names, Sherpa Gabe. Hello again. And of course we've returned to the glittering Neat Glass Shaped Whiskey Tangent Arena where last time in round two, we once again saw both number one seeds advance with only one upset and almost mirror image to round one. But today in round three, aka the quarterfinals, the Elite Eight or whatever the hell you want to call it, we are ready to crown the finalists of each proofing bracket to determine who will move on to next week's semifinals and the ultimate final pour. Before all that happens, however, Ed's here to help us recall the eight whiskeys that have made it through from the first two rounds and who will be battling here today to make their Whiskey Madness wishes come true. Thanks, Scott. So the, I think the selection committee, you know, really deserves credit for the seats this time. I mean, <laughs> the Bacchus of last year. And mm. I, I mean, I'm not going to listen. Some of the selection committee were not brought back because of last year. I mean, <laughs> you lose all four number ones in the first round. You, evidently, you didn't seat them right. But this year, all four number ones are still in the game. Yep. And the one that we thought was the weakest, you know, wild turkey rare breed rye in the 110 proof bracket went through. Yeah. And so it validated its seat as well. Whether it is the true number one of the bracket, it's got a big test today. So let's see what's going on bracket wise. In the 90 proof bracket we have the number one seed eagle rare tenure mm. against bullet tenure which is going to be really interesting because yeah. there's a lot of similarities between the two in the hundred proof bracket we have the perennial also ran baker's single mm. barrel who's been on a little bit of a rise since switching from a small batch to a single barrel yep. and they're looking to use this tournament to kind of like send a message that they're no longer going to be forgotten about they deserve a place on the shelf with all the other big boy whiskeys. Absolutely. And they're going against one of my personal favorites, Redemption High Rye 105 Proof Bourbon. And these are normally store picks. I personally think that the flavor profile between both of them is very similar. And I think it's going to be a little bit of a danger point. We have 105 proof versus 107 proof bakers. Mm. So at the 110 proof, Wild Turkey Rare Breed number one is going against number two, Old Ezra number seven. Once again, one of the ones that I've hyped a long time that I used to get for $45 and now $75 most places. And that's why I don't really drink it as much. Mm. But it's not overhyped. It's overpriced. Mm. So then finally... The 120 proof, no surprise that the Larceny Bower proof went through the number one. Um, a little bit of surprise that the 1792 full proof went through. Mm. Not to me, though, because if you listen to the episode that we did on it, it is a delicious spirit. And Larceny is going to have a hands full today. These are all really close to me. There could be an upset in any of these. Uh, I agree, though, that the 120 proof is probably the closest. Even though the 90 proof has two 10 year expressions, yeah. I think they're pretty different because the bullet has a high rye mash bill and the Eagle is less than like 10%. The Baker's Redemption, I mean, I give the edge to Baker's there just because I think I like it better, but who knows when we taste it blind. And the 110 proof is an interesting one because it's a rye going against the bourbon, the only rye left in the tournament. Gabe, what do you think of the matchups right here? I'm going to say it again. I do think that your winner is going to come out of the 100 or 110 proof bracket. I noticed a um, a brand off air mm-hmm. to Scott before we started recording, and uh, I did do a tiebreaker of it in uh, the first or the second week's episode, and I was like, I'd never had this. Wow. Oh, the Bakers, you said. Yeah. You, well, you really yeah, liked Yeah, the yeah. Bakers really popped it up Is for that me. what he thinks yeah. he's going to win? I don't know if he I, I wrote think that it's down. Gonna, well, I got to check what I did. Oh, well, it's in the it's vault. It's written down. So, yeah. so next week, we'll reveal. Before we get into the semis and the final pour, we'll see if it made it to that. Form. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I said, the 110-100 uh, proofing brackets are sweet spot for me, and mm. we'll see what happens. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. All three of these, except for the 110 bracket, I think you're going to have a real hard time. Yeah, you're right. I think they're all similar in flavor profiles. So with the only maybe exception, the rye. And yeah, that's and, right. Yeah. Wild Turkey's Rare Breed Rye is the only mash bill that's enough different that we might notice. But I have to tell you, at 110 proof, it's hard to 
Thank God for the neat glasses. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. I, I really feel like I'm bringing my A game palette. That was kind of suspect last week. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like we didn't have a lot of focus. The energy was low. We came off a big first round, and I just felt like I couldn't concentrate on you, what I needed to. You got I'm drunk. Back. I'm back. I got a little drunk. <laughs> got a little drunk. And I mean, we didn't have a bad one in the bunch when we were sitting with 16 whiskeys in front of us. These eight are mm-hmm. definitely the elite eight, in definitely. my opinion. Yeah. All right. So Gabe's going to move over to the preparation area and pour our first matchup, Eagle Rare versus Bullet. Tenure. I want to be the greatest like Rocky. You know, I leave them all hate like a hobby. I'm out here making moves like a lobby. And if you ain't with me, it's a I got my mind on the facts. I'm a python crab, but I like real fast. So until I have everything I attack, everything that I lack, everything that I want, and I see matter of fact. Deep up in my mind, I manifest Every morning, I wake up obsessed. Okay, everybody, we're back. Gabe has poured the whiskeys into the A and B neat glasses, mm-hmm. and he's ready to pass them over to us. First, the A. Oh, exciting. First pour. I'm not even going to smell them. I'm going to put it right down because I know that they're going to smell similar, and I want to have a chance to okay. All right. let the neat glass do its magic for a minute. Mm-hmm. Swirl it around. This one looks slightly darker, which I'm surprised about. Yeah, not a whole lot of variation in color, but there is a slight distinction. Yeah, you think B looks darker? I did, yeah. Yeah, agreed. This is different. Yeah. Oh, A is so nice. Whew. Really similar, though. So t- tell me what you're thinking here with these uh, these sips, these noses. A is really nice. It's sweet. It has a lot of cherry on the nose. Um, it's very mild. Like, of course, these are 90 and 91.2 or something like that. B has a little bit more like a rye spice. So if I had to guess right now, I probably would know which one is which, but that's not really what I'm going for. Can I make a suggestion? When, uh, yeah. While you guys are just trying to figure out what's what, can I do some uh, Frankie Valley for you? <laughs> Frankie Valley? Uh, please no. <laughs> okay, good. I wasn't ready. <laughs> If these were sherry finished, maybe. Oh, <laughs> there you go. See? That's why they like to keep us together. <clears throat> it's kind of quality comedy you get here on the Whiskey Tangent Podcast. <laughs> well, and they say big girls don't cry, but I don't know about you bitches. <laughs> <laughs> mm, they were both really freaking delicious. Yeah, I could go either way. Yeah. We've heard it about you. <laughs> I know. I walked into that one. <laughs> you really did. Or like backed into it. Oh, <laughs> hey, I'm a team player. I'll play along. <laughs> so, so uh, do you have any descriptions of what you're tasting? I feel like there's a little bit more complexity to be, but I don't know if that's a plus or a minus. Like, is it not as smooth? Is yeah. it a little bit rougher? A is sweet and delicious and very smooth. And so am I getting more complexity from B or am I getting more roughness from B? Like it's not as good a product. Right. And then does that mean like A is more basic thin or, yeah. or is it just so smooth? Honestly, that's exactly the way I'm reading these two. Yeah. I hate to do it, Gabe. I need the smallest, not even a full pour. I mean, I literally need just a slight sip in each one okay. to make a final determination because I just am so unsure about which one I'm liking better. Yeah. Whichever one I pick, oh it's going to be by like the smallest of degrees. And there's more to be. There's more complexity to be. Just like I said, and we're going to have to trim this up, I know, but I'm not rushing this because no, 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 don't worry. Each bracket's it. important. But yeah, I take the pieces that are the best pieces. Even if we repeat ourselves, sometimes we repeat yeah. ourselves, but say it in a better way the second time. What would you say? <laughs> sometimes we repeat ourselves, but when we say it the second time, it's better. Oh, I didn't catch that the first time. Sometimes when we're feeders. Okay, you made your point. <laughs> point made, Scott. Now just decide. Mm. I love this. I love them both. I'm really sad to be picking one because that means the other one doesn't go on. But yeah, well, got to be a winner. It's got to be a loser. I've made my decision. So is Ed. I am getting the results handed over simultaneously. I feel like Gabe is going to be drinking. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what did we pick? Both of you picked A. Ooh, Ooh, okay. All right. And A was? No big surprise, the bullet tenure. Oh my wow. god! 
No, that's a huge surprise. Yeah, it was. Really? Yeah. I absolutely yeah. thought I was picking Eagle Rare. So was I. Wow. Unbelievable. Um, the B was more complex and... Yeah. Delicious. But wow, A just tasted so delicious and smelled so delicious. And then, I, like I said before, it's just a, the smallest, smallest nth of amount. a degree at that edged it out. After the first round of tasting, I would have probably gone with B. But A is so sweet. I can see 50 people being here telling me, like, I like the complexity of B. You guys are missing out on it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's more complex. There's a reason why it was the number one seed. Yeah. But this is how it goes when you taste stuff <laughs> blind. And these are our first ones of the day. So it's not like our palate was that much occluded. No. Nor am I drunk. So <laughs> yes. the reality is. Um, <laughs> wait for it. <laughs> yeah, wait for it. Because I already had to take a second pour when I told myself I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so You're failing doing... already at my own standards. Yeah. That was an amazing experience. Yeah. And I think it really improved my opinion of bullet tenure because I thought at $51 it wasn't worth the money. But if it's able to edge equal rare for me today. In a blind and, tasting. And yeah. it was able to beat King's County last week. And for those of you out there who have never tried it, next time you're in a bar and it's on the shelf and oh, you see yeah. that white label. Mm -hmm. it's and it's not just you picked it. Like right. I picked it too. Like We yeah. both thought the same thing about the same whiskeys in the same way and we were right. both wrong. Yeah, right, I, right. I am a bit surprised. Well, too. not wrong, but I mean... Well, well wrong about right. our pick. Yeah. I mean, we discussed the fact that we both recognized there was complexity to B. Yeah. A was thinner and it is. But right now, today, Bullet Tenure bull, moves on. Bullet Tenure moves on to the semifinals, and Eagle Rare is knocked out. It's our first number one to leave the tournament. Yeah. So Gabe's going to go back to the preparation area. He doesn't get to drink. And uh, <laughs> next up will be Baker's Single Barrel, the top seed, versus number three seed, Redemption High Rye Bourbon. You could try to play it, but you're never going to be me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me Bloody hands break through the chains, go free me Looking for change, looking for pain Pulling a mob, pushing a train I'll never stop, stick to a lane Pick up the pieces and go rearrange yeah. I'll be the best above all the rest Put me to the test and Expect nothing less, you check as I'm chess What's happening next, yeah. He got the venom, a tangible weapon No coming in second, this life is a lesson He got a new engine from pain, it's a blessing New focus, no guessing, just bold an obsession All in his possession, you got the red I leave an impression and take a redemption Just kill no discretion, your mind is a weapon 11-11, it's time for progression oh! And we're back We got the uh, 100 proof bracket up uh, next Woohoo! And we're gonna pour Baker's single barrel Going up against the Redemption High Rye This has got me scared because I have to tell you I love myself some Redemption High Rye And I love myself in Baker's mm. And as I remember last time, I picked against the Bakers. My palate was in the wacky time. Right, right. Not that the Heresy Rye from Broken Barrel isn't a delicious whiskey. It is. I picked it. Gabe came in and righted the ship, and the, num <laughs> and the number one seed went in through, and he broke the tie. Right. But the Redemption, actually, I think we both picked that. Didn't we both pick I, that? Yeah, and, and it was an upset. And what did that upset again? Redemption beat Pure Kentucky XO. Right, Pure Kentucky XO. And I'm glad it did, because maybe people will think it's not that good, and they won't buy it. <laughs> the Kentucky XO from Willet, but anytime I can see a barrel pick of the Redemption High Rye 105 proof. Now, they have the High Rye that's like regular proof, which is like 90, right? Like 90. Yeah, they're regular. Like, but like I said, I've seen three or four different places online have the same 105 proof. So when they put the barrel out, that's the proof they like to do it at. Right. And so if you see Redemption High Rye Bourbon store pick at 105, that's what you want to jump into. That's a delicious whiskey. And what's great about this tournament is all the losers get put out on my uh, whiskey cart. Yeah. And I'm able to drink and sample them and the pure kentucky xo i just had two days ago and it was awesome it's spectacular yeah. in fact foreshadowing we're going to take all the whiskeys in the tournament and we're going to use them to make an infinity bottle yes um because <laughs> we're not doing our own infinity bottles anymore we actually we weren't going to do an infinity bottle but scott had a great idea like hey let's do one more <laughs> this time with all of them and we might do it every year maybe that'll be yeah. our thing well we'll sip it on our uh, last call and we won't like go through the whole thing but we'll right. just say uh, if we like it you thought Infinity Bottles were over, and guess right, what? Right, right, yeah. right. Just when you thought it was safe. Just like Hollywood. There is no new right. ideas. Well, we're just right. going to rehash. Well, it's right. called an Infinity Bottle. It That's literally right. goes on forever. <laughs> <laughs> Including us using it to they're death. Gonna, they're going to dig up your bodies in like a thousand years <laughs> in a tomb, right, right. and there's going to be a bottle sitting there like, right. hi. Right, with the Infinity symbol on it. And they're like, oh my God, it's an Infinity right. Bottle. We'll Drink be like me. 85. Like, so then we're mixing it with our Infinity Bottle with Geritol. <laughs> and, <laughs> and prune juice. Well, wait, let me take my teeth out so I can get the full flavor profile going here. <laughs> Oh, God, now I'm tasting my gums. Oh, my God, I taste my dentures. This is awful. <laughs> Do you think taking your teeth out is going to affect the flavor of a whiskey? I mean, are you opening mm, more taste buds up? Right. Your, uh... Next on the Whiskey Tension Podcast, whiskeys you can cut with your prune juice. <laughs> <laughs> Does your whiskey taste like teeth? Take your teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God.
Hey, why are we here again? I'm I don't a, know. What? Okay. <laughs> Gabe's handling us. Uh, handling? Handling you? Wow. Not me. Handing mm. over the A's. Oh, I'm the lucky one then. Here, take my A in your hand. So the A, it's got a, a nice uh, a. nose to it. Yeah. yeah. Now grab my B. <laughs> You're a B. <laughs> I got to tell you, looking at these two, uh, A and B, they're, you're not going to tell much by looking at them. They're very, very similar in color. Yeah. Thanks. I just said that. <laughs> and I was concurring. I yeah. should have concurred. Wow. Why, yes. why you, didn't I concur? You should say, I concur. I think you need the prescription for that, don't you? I concur. Or is it over the counter now? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's an OTC. <laughs> How many milligrams of I concur do you take on a daily basis? <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot, and actually. What, and what, what are the symptoms that you would take it for? I'm pretty contrary, so I don't take a lot of I concur. Dude. <laughs> I don't know. How can we go up one bracket and it'd be this much hotter? Because you're in the room, Ed. <laughs> Ooh, that's why it's hotter. <laughs> oh, my God. These look similar. They smell similar. And now I'm going to taste. And if they taste similar, I'm just going to just They don't taste say, similar. Fuck me. They do not taste similar. They do not. One quick question. Okay. Can you tell which one has formaldehyde in it? <laughs> God, is that what you did? <laughs> well, we'll find out in a couple minutes, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> right. And we right, right. Right. We dropped dead. It's like, hello, it's a Gabe Tangent podcast <laughs> with Siobhan. <laughs> and it's like a, a coup. Oh, Scott, Siobhan, did you bring the shovel and the pickaxe? <laughs> is there a grassy area behind Jackie's Crossing And somewhere? the chainsaw? We got to cut up Ed. We're going to bring him down. It'll That's be dark it. soon. Yeah. Just We have to wait it out. It'll be like when they had to cut the horse up in Animal House. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> To not to be redundant, these are both delicious. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, geez, there's no slouches here. I mean, Scott, how similar are these? They're, Isn't it crazy? They're very similar. The, the one thing that I get is a difference on them is that B has sort of a an anise licorice kind of in the beginning finish. Right? <laughs> oh, the beginning, or finish? okay. Yeah, well, I think it's the. Well, it might be in the beginning. It kind of goes all the way through, but I really tasted it on the finish. It what? doesn't mean that you like it better. You just notice it. No, I'm just noticing that that's what makes these different. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting Ed's uh, choice here. This was honestly even closer than last time for me. Mm. I think that if I taste these in five minutes, I might go the other way. Yeah, I, again, this is just the smallest degrees of separation between the two of these. Um, I was surprised that we both picked the same one on the last one. Yeah. If we pick the same one on this one, I will also be surprised. Yeah. But I think Gabe's going to probably break this tie. Well, I just tasted the last bit I had of each one, and it <laughs> reaffirmed my choice. So okay. I feel a little bit better. Okay, so is it a unanimous decision? It is a tie. Okay, interesting. Damn. Okay, so, so Ed picked Ed picked A. Yeah. Uh-huh. A was Redemption High Ride. Oh. Oh, that, see, that's one of my favorites. So I mean, I drank way more of that than I have Bakers in my life. Yeah, and I chose B, which is Bakers. So I am enthralled yes. to yeah. see which one Gabe is going to choose. Overtime. Ah! All right, Ed has poured the two expressions for Gabe to break the tie between Baker's Single Barrel and Redemption High Ride Bourbon. I've handed him glass A. Did you put any in here? I gave you the .75 because you you have to drive. That's true. I'm just busting your chops. Relax. And uh, just need glass number two, letter B. So, Ed, when we were tasting, did you have a guess as to which one was which? No. Did you even know? Because no. I didn't have a guess either. Like, no. I had no idea. They were, the complexity of them were similar. I thought Baker's would be more complex and that the high ride would be more spicy. But to be honest, I did taste the anise in the B, like you said. But I'm like, I don't, I don't know what that means because I don't have, like, the whiskey jug tasting notes in front of me to tell me who tastes more anise. Right. Well, on the nose right off the bat, I'm, I'm getting a little more sweetness on A. They're both kind of sweet. There's nothing really, uh, no, no alcohol forwardness coming through. Well, that's the neat glass, brother. Yep. Well, there you go. <laughs> neat glass diffuses the alcohol and leaves a flavor. You know Agreed, I mean? Gabe. They both smell incredibly similar. And anybody who wants to grab and join the, the party with the neat glass, go on neatglass.com. And if you put on whiskey tan as a code, you get 10% off your first order from us. <laughs> A little gift from your friends at the Whiskey Tangent Podcast. That's right. And the Neat Glass. I do got to say, uh, did uh, the Keebler pull out as a sponsor? Because I don't see any saltines here today. Oh, yeah. no, we don't have any saltines. Wow. Yeah, Keebler pulled out. Fuck yeah. you, elves. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to be pregnant by an elf, anyway. What? They pulled out. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. 
Once again, that's the kind of comedy right. you come to wow. expect. This is what you sign up for. <laughs> and going with the nose of A, uh, I'm getting a, a lot more complexity in B, a lot more density, uh, a little more spice. A lot more complexity. Okay. It's, it's okay. very delicious. I don't think I'm going to have a hard time picking this one. I just hope it's the one I think I'm picking. All right. Okay. So A is sweeter, B is more complex. And then this is what we said about the Eagle Rare and the Bullet Head here. Yeah. And we end up going with the sweeter, not the most complex one. So I guess it's whatever Gabe finds more more delicious in his mouth today. Exactly. Sweet or complex. Mm. Gabe's kind of sweet and complex, really, mm. if you get to know him. Yeah. He's a nice guy. Yeah. I am too, I think. Oh, I are, think you that needy, are. are you that needy that you had to jump in on Gabe's moment? <laughs> no, I'm just going to say, I think I think we all are. <laughs> oh, we're a nice guy. We're all I mean, sweet sure, and complex. Sure. sure. Yeah. I think that's fair. Okay. I'm, uh, it's it's for a tender take, moment we shared. I'm, it's, it's, very nice. I'm tender. <laughs> If I can jump in, if I can, <laughs> if I can, if I can, if I can evaluate the whiskey at any point, if I can pull you guys off each other for just a second, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish. And then you got ten. Oh man, let me hold Edward, you down and make my decision. It would hurt me. I'm going. <laughs> Jesus, I'm gonna <laughs> emotionally. Okay, all right. Like not call you back. <laughs> yeah. No. Sweet and tender moments. All right, pick A or B. <laughs> I am gonna go with B. Oh, and B was. The number one seed moves on. Oh, Baker's! Whoa! <laughs> Baker's yes. single barrel yes. takes the day. Wow. Uh, uh, with a it's very it. strong challenge from Redemption. High rye. Unreal. Oh, Both so, very good. I just think Baker's is just a little more uh, a little more complex. That's fair. There's no argument to that. Yeah. So we had a number one drop down in the first round today. Yeah. The second round, a number one. Moved on. Through. Yeah. And so we're going to take a break, and we're going to clean some glasses, and we're going to come back for the 110 proof to see what the wild turkey rare breed does against old Ezra number seven. All right. Get up, nah, I ain't a quitter. Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter. Big picture, I'm a straight killer. Rise in the song to the highest bidder. Got juice, got gas, I'ma move fast. New shoes, new tracks, like who's that? I'm new, come back better than last. Yeah, it's a new me, never gonna look back. Okay, so we're back, and Gabe has poured the 110 proof brackets. This is the Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye, the number one seed, against the number two seed, Old Ezra, number seven. Gabe, hand us the glasses, please. Off air, we were arguing whether Kim Kardashian should be famous. I said she should because she's beautiful, and they're like, that's not enough to be famous. I said, well, I don't know. It's been a reason for some women to be famous for a long time. Like, beauty's a strong category. But yeah, but they're also very artificial looking. I mean, I'm not taking away from their yeah. good looks, but they are uh, surgically enhanced, if you will. Right. Well, I mean, Gabe, we all know you got a butt job, too, just like Kim Kardashian did. So <laughs> You never complained. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm supposed to be tasting. What am I doing? Oh, yeah. Wild, <laughs> wild turkey. Wild turkey oh, rye. Wild old Ezra number seven. Yeah. All right, so we're looking at, what's the proof it's on these? Uh, the, the wild turkey rare breed rye is 112.2. Yeah, wild turkey is low for their cast runs. It's very interesting how they do that. And the old Ezra is 117. Wow. Man, A was good. Damn. <laughs> Ooh, A is fucking good. Okay. Now we try B. Hmm. I think B is the rye. I'm getting a little cherry, too. A is really sweet. It's nice. It's complex. It's got cinnamon. I have to tell you, it's the first time I feel like <laughs> I, I feel like I have an initial feeling of over one of them. Gotcha. Yeah, B's got all the characteristics of a rye, but not like a hugely crazy rye, and, and the wild turkey is only a 51% rye. Yeah. Yeah, this is the category I thought you guys are both going to be pretty much unanimous on. Well, this is definitely one where I think we're going to know which one is which. Right. But again, which one we pick. <laughs> Although, wow, Ed has submitted his already. This might be a record timing. Yeah. Ed already threw one Jesus, over. it's only been like three minutes. Now the pressure's all on Scott here. It definitely is. I am going to take my time because I feel like I know which one is which, but I don't know which one I like better. I got a feeling this is going to be one of those head both over to Ed. Scott's going to close his eyes. It might be. One was very good. One was more complex okay. and had better flavor. And there is a little bit of an off-putting finish on one of them. I mean, very slight. I mean, it's these are two great whiskeys. Yeah, yeah. The same thing that we were saying in the first two, where it's really just 1.1 yeah. versus 1.2. Yeah. 
Listen, if it's a wild turkey, then it's wild turkey. I'm, I can't mm-hmm. pick old Ezra because I like it. Yeah, that's why we're here. I mean, you might have your favorites off air. Hey. You might like certain things, but at a certain time that you're tasting both of them, one might jump out at the, there's a uh, slight, top of the there's other. There's a slight off puttiness of the finish of one of them. Okay. It's just, I can't put it anywhere different than that. It's that slight. and so Right, because that could be the proof. That could be yeah, like an oaky right. finish. That yeah, could be, right. you know, the could yeast the, or something that he just doesn't like in the whiskey. Could right. be the embalming fluid. Could be. That gave putting in the arsenic <laughs> yeah gabe is dripping in formaldehyde right. at random intervals right. for some reason right i'm surprised trying to poison us right. i'm really surprised you're both sitting here still <laughs> yep. you guys are just fucking immortal yep. gabe's fans always we need more game real i want some more game you know you guys need game why are all these guys sound like they're backwards well that's with, that's with your fans i mean that's your fan base he can't control who your fan base is <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm listening. Hey, I like that game. He's fucking funny. And he's got a beard. He's fucking amazing. Yeah, I like his beard. I just got one question for you guys. What kind of critters Gabe caught in his beard last week? <laughs> hey, does Gabe have his own podcast? Because I'd rather listen to that. <laughs> I know y'all got them things that them yuppies call goat teeth, but Gabe got a man's beard, so we like him down here in the Pine Barrens. <laughs> hey, we, Pine we, Barrens. We, we nicknamed him Gabe the Jersey Devil. You know what I'm saying? Right, if you're not from the Jersey area, there's a place in Jersey, it's about a third of the state, called the Pine Barrens. And well, it's a third of South Jersey. Well, okay. Is, so it, a, is it a third of the whole state? Well, a third of New Jersey is protected forest wildlife, oh, well, uh, and part it, of that is the Pine well, Barrens. Well, let me take that back. It, it is yeah. quite a large uh, landmass, the Pine Barrens. It's, yeah, it's bigger right. than you think. And so and the people that live there are called the Pineys, and they talk like, like hey there, I want me to... First of all, I don't want to say all Pineys say like that, but some do. Aren't they? And evidently, most of them are Gabe's fans. <laughs> <laughs> it's, also, it's also where the Jersey Devil resides. That's so. right. The Jersey, Jersey Devil, Devil is there. Look Mama, it up. It's weird. Mama Leeds, thirteenth child, who was right. banished upon uh, delivery. Well, he has clothes hose, and he's like a, a horse's head or something, uh, right. or goat's head rather. So Scott's made his decision. I have made my decision, and I feel like it might be the opposite of what I usually choose. Well, so we'll see. we'll see. We will see. Will Will we be done, or does Gabe have to change seats? Gabe, is it a unanimous decision? Wow. It is unanimous. You both chose A. And A was? Old Ezra number seven. Yes. Oh, I wow. thought surprising. Very surprising. I, I mean, oh. I think once again, Luxro puts out some good products. I've been an Old Ezra fan. I think it has a tremendous flavor. And I'm not the only one. Like I said, it went for $45 a bottle to $75 a bottle in our area. So I really liked the Wild Turkey Rye. Yeah. I really liked it. And everybody knows that I'm a rye guy. Yeah. But yeah. The Old Ezra number seven just had a really delicious beginning, middle, finish. Whereas I think what Ed said was there was a little bit of an off putting note wow, to crazy. the B that I also tasted and that's why I went with A. Even though I prefer Rise, the Old Ezra number 7 is absolutely fantastic. See, this, yeah. this is surprising coming from you and being a Rye guy and being Wild Turkey yeah. it, it's it's yeah. number one seed is very well hyped yeah. and I, this is the one I thought was going to be a slam dunk on the, the Wild Turkey. I am totally wow. wrong. Well I have to tell you, it only actually reaffirmed that Wild Turkey is a nice pour. Yeah. I mean, especially with the old ass we're climbing up to 70, 75 a bottle. The wild turkey rubber is around 60, right? Yeah. Yeah, probably on the so low end. They're both up there, but I mean, you're saving $15 a bottle. So if you like the rye profile, you, you got to give it a look. But old ass number seven, it's long since shed the underground status it used to have. Mm. So now it's got to fly. It was the second seed. It was kind of pissed off that it wasn't the first seed. You know, Blood Oath was mad it wasn't even included. But we like, you're a one-off. We're not doing you. And like, so the Luxro was already mad right. at us. But uh, Old Ezra's here, and it's waving the flag high for Luxro. And both number twos are moving on. So in the next bracket, we have the 120 proof. The number one seed, Larceny, is going against the number three seed, 1792. I oh. love the Barton 1792 full proof. This awesome. And this particular bottle. Yeah. Hardest bracket yet. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble, hey All right, so we're about to finish up 
this round of the Whiskey Madness with the 120 proof bracket. Uh, and above. This is 120. So, oh my God, I'm just so excited about this one. Tension breaker. <laughs> 120 and above. Let it the out. number one Larceny Barrel Proof, one of our favorite whiskeys of all time. And going against our one of our other favorite whiskeys, the 1792 Bartons has been spectacular. Mm. It spawned our Portly Bad episode, episode 46. If you have not heard episode 46, the uh, Barton 1792 full proof on there and what that turned into, that was hysterical. <laughs> and so they're playing with the house money. Barton says nothing to lose here. They know. They're, you know, they're shooting deep all day. Yep. And they're going to go for Larceny full, but they know what it means if they walk away the winner today. It gives them legitimacy. Uh, to be honest, it gives them a shot at the title. Yeah. Larceny is, they're the big dog right now. They're the whiskey advocate, whiskey of the year. They have the pedigree that nobody else has. And so Martins knows this is their final pour. They know if they get past Larceny, anything can happen. I totally agree. Larceny, I've been hyping it the entire time. This is the one to beat. If 1792 does beat it, then it immediately becomes the one to beat in the tournament. I predict... Yes. If it moves on, it wins the whole because damn Because right thing. now, it's a long shot because me and Scott love Larceny, and it was nothing for us to pick Larceny last week. There was the one whiskey that we said this was a no-brainer. It blew the Heaven's Door away, and Heaven's Door is a damn good whiskey. I have two bottles in my house of it. I love it. Exactly. That's a good point because yeah. like, just because we picked it to move on doesn't mean we hate the other no, one. No, I we loved, love it. We loved yeah. all of these spirits. Yes. All 16 Absolutely. are wonderful. These came out of my closet. <laughs> <laughs> They're in my vault. Well, like uh, right. 10 of 16 right. did, right? 10 of 16. Other things came out of your closet too, but we're not going to get into that. Um, <laughs> like Gage's brother Pete. He, anyway, so. What was he doing there in your closet? What, what is Pete doing in your closet? What's well, he looking for uh, open what, pies? Was he in a gimp outfit? <laughs> We're going to drink here, so let's not ruin our palates. And our okay. Yes, okay. Yes, I'm, I'm, yeah. You said the 1792. You kind of diminished it, but I think it's it's been on the, the radar for quite a number of years. I'm not diminishing uh, it. I'm just saying compared to the Larceny, well, yeah, well, the Larceny with the hype, with hype whiskey, whiskey of the right. year. Yeah. I've right. never, first of all, you can't even get... Do they have it on the shelf, or do you have to get it from a... From I a haven't, oh, no. I've, you can get a 1792 foolproof on the shelf. They do have a 1792 single barrel. That's different than the 1792 foolproof. This is basically 1792 foolproof single barrel. Right. That's, so this particular one that we're tasting, you might not be able to find the exact same thing. But I will say this. If it's close and it loses, I think you have to understand that, A, it's a lot cheaper than Larcy, like half price. And second, yeah. you can actually find it. So there's two <laughs> things about it. So, also l- true. so listen to how this goes. Yeah. And even if it doesn't win, you should go out and try to get it. Right. And if we do have a tie, we're going to do something different this round. Um, Are we? Well, I'm going to taste it, and I'm going to break the tie. But but Scott and I are both going to strip down to the skivvies and have a beer at Uncle Brawl. Uh, wow. Three rounds, five minutes each, and uh, the winner stands up listen, top. And we're we're going to wrestle? Listen, we're not here to like promote your little sicko <laughs> fantasy. Sex games. Sex fantasies, all right? All right, fine. Skivvies. <laughs> skivvies, what is this, 1930? A guy Just can dream, give us right? the whiskey. A guy can dream, right? Is that a dream or a nightmare? But, give yeah. us the whiskey. <laughs> If we're sprinting, yeah. Not sprinting, bare knuckle boxing. Fine. Uh, Just give me the A. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we've we sidetracked. Oh, Jesus. Oh. That's okay. Uh, nope. you, you broke the preparation area. There's nothing wrong here. <laughs> Everything's calm. Everything takes, just take a breath. <laughs> Find your center. Oh, this is the fourth Relax. matchup. This is the seventh whiskey we've had. No, it's actually eighth because we pre-gamed. Somewhere your livers are going. How yep. much more? God damn it. My liver has not had a good week. I'm going to say that. Very nice. Very nice. Has it ever had a good okay. week? I've kept in training this week. Glass B. Here we go. Ooh, God, that's nice too. Once Jesus. again, the two whiskeys, going by visuals alone, you're not going to be able to distinguish them. They're very, very similar. No, I can't. Right. I hope to get more off the initial taste, but I did not. The proofs of these are the Larceny is 122.6 and the Bartons is 125. Which is our highest. Proof. Yes. Hmm. This one is a tough call. They're both mulling it over, and Ooh. it's it's going to be very tough. That had an interesting pepper quality to it. Uh, a did. A did. <laughs> B is so dense, complex, and um, uh, luscious. Luscious. I honestly, <laughs> Good word, Gabe. I literally have nothing to say right now. They are so close to me right now. This is as close as the equal wear of the bullet word to me at the mm-hmm. beginning of this. Of the, I knew of this, this was going to be yeah. the hardest one. I uh, knew I it. I saw this coming, too. I knew it. I, I feel uh, the second pour coming on soon here from at least Ed, possibly Scott. No, no. I, I have plenty. Give me a half of the .75 for each. Do not give me a full one, please. I only need one more sip. I've made my decision. I have. have. Yep. I have. They're both complex. They're both delicious. They're wonderful. They're both wonderful. The fact that these guys are not meeting in the final is a disgrace. <laughs> these are the two best whiskeys I've had today. Yeah. 
We have Scott's decision, uh, which usually Ed comes up first, but Ed is now circling. Scott's trying not to look. Don't look. I don't look. Don't well, look. It doesn't matter if I look it, or not. It matters a whole lot. Does this, it? The whole thing can be moot. <laughs> God damn, don't you argue with science. This <laughs> I don't. Uh, yeah, the toughest thing I've done in my life. I mean, besides like getting multiple master's degrees. and Oh, my God. Your and, raging and, ego over and, your and master's so degree. <laughs> hey, guys, five. guess what? What, Gabe? I'm drinking again. Woo! Wow. It's a tie. We have Ed picking A. Uh huh. Scott picking B. Okay. A was? A was larceny. Oh, my God. I picked the 1792? Yes, you did. Wow. wow poor wow. Gabe has to drink the two best whiskeys of the fucking <laughs> Oh, that's oh, all poor Gabe. Oh, God. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Overtime. Okay, so Ed is pouring the glasses for Gabe in the 120 proof bracket, the Larceny Barrel Proof, versus the 1792 full proof. Ed was just uh, being salty about the fact that we drank <laughs> half his bottle that he right. paid $110 I, I, for. Right, I brought a $110 bottle of Larceny over here, which somehow is halfway proof, and they point out that, well, you're the one that keeps getting the extra pours of it. I said, that's just my way to drink my share of the Larceny. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's fascinating how good the 1792 Bartons is. I am floored. That I chose it. Oh, yeah. Lord. I, I was so worried I chose it. <laughs> like, when Gabe said a time, I'm like, oh, God damn it. Did I choose the fucking not number one again? But here Oh, good. Scott did. Right. Scott. <laughs> but what will Gabe choose? So now we will give it to Gabe, the first of his name, the, the breaker <laughs> of ties. Exactly. <laughs> the eater of cookies. The grower of beards. <laughs> Here's A. I am many things to many people. He is many. The raiser of children. Actually, thank God that Gabe has to go pick up his daughter. If we need a break. Yeah. Right. So what's going to happen? We'll give you a little bit behind the scenes of the podcast. A little inside baseball. All right. So this is going to finish this round. And then Gabe's going to leave for like two and a half hours to do Gabe stuff. <laughs> and we're going to eat sandwiches here and take a nap probably and drink coffee. And then when Gabe comes back, we're going to record the final pour tonight. Yeah. Because our livers won't take another weekend like this. I mean, yeah. Like <laughs> this is the way we normally do it. Yeah. But I think like this year by doing it by proof. We have ones that are absolutely 120 and above. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we never had this situation. Because honestly, doing this four weekends in a row, yeah. it's, it's yeah, a, we can't do it four weekends. It's a trial, in a row. man. All right, so Gabe's got both uh, okay. expressions. Let's see what he's thinking. Initial impression, Gabe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, impression of the nose, uh, they're both very sweet. Uh, yeah. Not mm -hmm. really much distinguishing the two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, upon the first tasting, I went with A first. Mm -hmm. I found it just a little more spicy than I would uh, have uh, expected. Uh, yeah. B was a little, uh, still a little high proof, a little, little hot. Well, they're both high proof games. Yeah. yeah. That's but what I, you're saying uh, is not as much. Not as much. Okay. There was a little more smoothness inside that heat. Okay. Uh, whereas, okay. like I said, the A had a bit of a, a harsh bite to it. Right. Right. Now, what you think is you've had one of these before. You haven't had the other because you were on the Portly Bad episode. Right. I've got some water in. I'm going to go back for a second taste and uh stay tuned all right <laughs> so he's taking some water and now he's going to go for the a oh, oh my god he's going to spit on me <clears throat> well, there's no spittoon here why not well every neat glass looks like a spittoon <laughs> right. so just spit in ed's glasses yeah, spit in my, <laughs> my neat glasses all right so gabe has tried both of them he's tried them with water and i think maybe he has a, a choice all right yeah I, I can see why you guys had a hard time with this one yeah. these right especially with a little bit of water added into them <laughs> it, it really made them very close to each other oh however I, I think one just has a slight step above the other one yeah. and i am gonna go with glass b b b and is Larceny Bow Proof. <laughs> the number one goes I've all the way through. I've never been so happy to be a loser. <laughs> Larceny goes through to the next round. Honestly, the 1792 is fucking delicious, and I picked it for a reason, but I picked it for a reason that was different from the two of yours, so I'm interested to hear why you picked it over the 1792. For me, it was just a, a slight bit of sweetness on the finish yes. and okay. smoothness. Yes. From the beginning to the end, the larceny does not falter. So I'm actually encouraged to hear that yeah. because the difference that I tasted is the exact difference that you're describing. Yeah. I just preferred 
the difference of the 1792 right. you like, more you than like the, the harshness a little bit. Yeah, a little, a little, little bit. bit. A little grittiness. Sometimes little, you do, yeah. Yeah, well, a little you know, bit. What's really kind of funny was the 1792, neat. I said it was a bit more of a stringency yeah. to it. A yeah. bit more artificial tasting maybe Okay, compared to the larceny. But when you put a little water, yeah. it equaled them out a lot more. And I don't know about you, but usually when you have a high-proof whiskey, you tend not to drink it neat quite a bit. I would yeah, think right. more people will have a little water, put it on yeah. the globe. Sure. I think that's really where the larceny shined through was that proofing down and mellowing out, it really showed its characteristic. Yes. I feel like the difference between them is that larceny is much more balanced. Yeah. Where 1792 yeah. full proof is a little bit more in your face. It's so it all depends bit. on a, what you prefer. If you poured the 1792 with five other whiskeys that were 125 proof, they'd oh. all be harsher than it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. like it's way smoother than you expect for 125. Yeah, right. Way These are just a Small degrees of separation. Right, right. Well, if you're going on price point alone, then you can right. see where you know. Yeah, I mean, the, I can get two two and a half bottles of the Bartons for a bottle of Larceny, but damn, the Larceny is good. <laughs> <It> is good. <laughs> All right, so to to finish up the episode, Scott. Yeah. Thoughts? So in the ninety proof bracket, moving on is the Bullet Ten Year. I think the biggest upset in this tournament. In the hundred proof bracket, we're going to have it going against the Baker Single Barrel at one hundred seven. That should be interesting. There's a huge proof difference between those two. Yeah. The 110 proof, the old Ezra's moving on, and kind of a surprise, but also kind of not. And the last bracket, the Larceny's going through, and the old Ezra at 114 proof is not giving up too much to the 122 Larceny, so I don't think proof is going to be a huge thing. It's going to be complexity, flavor, and finish. It's going to be highly contested at all levels, Scott. Here's the thing about what's happening in this. So we have the bullet tenure, we have the Baker single barrel, we have the old Ezra number seven, and we have the Larceny barrel proof. Mm-hmm. There is not a single rye left in the tournament. Correct. So for the first time in Whiskey Tangent Podcast, Whiskey Madness history, you're right. A rye cannot win. Cannot win. After two straight years of rye's winning. Yeah. So Scott is neutered. <laughs> oh my god, what happened? You look like a Ken doll. <laughs> So we will have the semifinals and the final pour, and a champion mm. will be crowned. Absolutely. Please turn in next week for the Whiskey Tangent Podcast. I'm Scott. I'm Ed. I'm Gabe. Cheers, everybody. Later. You can never beat them and they're better than you face it Thinking that they're giving them your knock, thinking straight kid No, they don't give a damn, you got what I'm saying? I'm not fucking playing, I'll give it to you straight, man There's too many others and you're not that great, man Stop what you're saying, stop what you're making Everybody here knows that you just fake it